Hello, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan, at MSP. It's the Ukraine war news update, but I'm splitting this into two because the geopolitical section went on so long. Here's your military aid section and the geopolitical aid section, uh, geopolitical section will come later. Sorry, not sorry. We're going to go to, we're not going to do the frontline segment in, in this video. I, I think I'm stripping out this video because it would just go on for too long uh, and I end up speaking too much about the frontline. So we're going to go straight to the military aid and other kind of assistance segment. And there's quite a lot to say about this in terms of particularly what's going on with Poland. Uh, and we just had the UN uh, meeting and we've had Ramstein as well. So all this kind of stuff that influences decisions being made in terms of assistance. Right. What came out of the Ramstein meeting? Apparently Ukraine's defense partners, including Germany and the USA, focus on winter aid pledges and maintenance rather than major offensive weapons at the first Ramstein meeting attended by Ukraine's new defense minister, Umarov. Okay, we're going to come to him in a second, but there was this lack of ATACMs, right? And lots of people, myself included, were expected this. Were expecting this. I was kind of hope expecting this to be on the uh, the next US aid package, and it wasn't. And there were some claims that if it's not, then it's Biden that that made that decision. I'm somewhat dubious about that. That that a US president would make uh, a decision by uh, on on a particular military. Um, weapon like that I, d I don't know i just think this is coming from the military i i we've we've gone through this a bunch of times however if you don't like biden you're going to blame biden right um this was utterly predictable to the biden administration so trent Talanko is not a biden fan for the reasons i laid out in this thread so he talks about this being a de-escalation clique uh, he he hates jake sullivan and blames him a lot for stuff and the Biden administration being sort of pro uh, de-escalation but you know that doesn't track with what you know if they, if they were big on de-escalation then we wouldn't be going through the F-16s yes it took some time but it seems to be a process of of you know it does take too long right I, I that's my personal opinion but there's something about ATACMs that just there must be other reasons going on. I don't know whether Taiwan is part of the calculus such that, hey, Taiwan are going to have greater need for ATACMs. So we're going to keep enough back in case we need to provide them with ATACMs. And, uh, it, you know, do, are we not making enough of them at the moment? Are they getting made? It's, you know. Stocks, US stocks, is it the right weapon? Some people on the threads, uh, and I've said this before, there are many claims that actually it's the wrong weapon. It gets shot down by air defense too easily. It's got quite a big footprint, blah, blah, blah. So I think there are other things taking place here. And I also, I said this morning in, in my earlier video today that I wonder whether the US has been involved in the development of the Neptune missiles so that Ukraine have their own indigenous missile that then they can use that into Russia. It's like the US can go, hey, well, you know, if they provided ATACMs and they're using ATACMs to fire them into into Russia, then the US would be like, okay, that ain't happening anymore, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas if the US kind of perhaps, I mean, this is complete speculation, are involved in the development with Ukraine of its own indigenous Neptune missile that has a decent range on it and can be used not only is not just an anti ship missile anymore, as you can see, it's been used in Crimea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, overnight. Then US go and John Kirby has just recently said Ukraine can choose to use their weapons as they like type thing. Then you start making a little bit more sense about the Atakams uh, of the Atakams decision. I just don't think Biden's going to be like saying all this stuff at the UN, doing all this, saying yes to F-16s are going. Yeah, no, about the and and uh, you know it's as if or everyone else, which is one of the articles said, all the other. Uh, departments have said, yeah, ATACMs are fine, and it's down to Biden if they don't go. Like him sitting there and going, yeah, you reckon everyone says they should go? Uh, no, they're not going to go. I just can't see that. There's, there's, there has to be something else going on here. Uh, so I that that's my position, and that's not because I I'm kind of pro Democrat, right? So it's it just it makes no sense. It makes no sense for your old man Biden to sit there and go, yeah, no, no to attackums because escalation. How about the F-16s? Yeah, yeah, send them. Like no, just so 
something else is happening. Just quite what it is, I don't know. And whether, so someone mentioned yesterday in one of the threads that there is a budget line for eight Atoms. And so there's something else going on, whether it needs to go through Congress, there's going to be some, I, I don't know, uh, whether it's still a thing that's, that's going through some procedural uh, hurdles or jumping some procedural hurdles, and whether it comes down to manufacturing as well. I I just don't know, but it doesn't make sense as is often portrayed. Right. Um, talking about the US military aid, it is a, a fairly sizable 325 million um, aid package, million dollar aid package, cluster munitions for 155 mil howitzers, Avenger short range air defense system. So those are Stinger missiles lo loaded on the back of Humvees. Uh, tow, they're the, um, the optical wired uh missile systems on bradley's so tow and 84 anti-tank weapons uh whether that's ammunition rather than weapons i don't know uh gimlers rockets for high mars systems obviously super useful javelin anti-tank missiles and other equipment uh according to an unnamed source uh, it could be it could change it's still being finalized so i don't know if that gives you elbow room for a little bit of uh added eight atoms at a later point i don't know um yeah uh the u.s provided kiev with the first batch of cluster munitions uh they they provide a range of up to 30 kilometers um but uh, yes yeah, still no uh, eight atoms but whether there are moves for taurus to be introduced uh, to add to the storm shadow and scalp stocks uh, there are some who argue that actually those missiles do uh, uh, just as good a job, if not better, than ATACMs. I mean, they are slightly different. They're not, not wholly comparable. Um, arguments will rage on. Biden will get the blame, no doubt. I just, yeah, not sure about that. Lithuania's, although, you know, he's uh, ultimately responsible. Like, if he really wanted them to go, then I'm sure he would he would be able to argue that. So I, I've said before that these people at the top of the of, of governments are very busy people. Like Biden's just been doing a speech at the UN. He's doing this. He's got his own domestic policies to, to thrash out and argue for. He's got, you know, he's got that meeting there. He's going over there. You know, he's not going to be looking into a Tackums in, in the finest detail like we are, right? And so he, uh, for someone like him, he will be told what the decision for a Tackums is. I'm absolutely certain of this. So, and I'm fairly sure it will come from the military. I don't even think Jake Sullivan would be like, yeah, maybe. So maybe a bit of advisors plus military. But the military really wanted a Tackums to go. They would go. I, I'm absolutely positive of that. If like Lloyd Austin and and Mark Milley came to Biden and said, they bloody need a Tackums. If they don't get a Tackums, we're screwed. They, we, they absolutely have to go, Joe. But, um, Biden would not go, no. I'm, I'm positive of that. Anyway, uh, Lithuania's defense minister announced a new military package for Ukraine, which includes explosive devices, maritime radars, and anti-tank ammo. Now, this gives me an opportunity to mention this guy, Umarov, who is the new uh, defense minister for Ukraine. Now, ap apparently, he's a, a, I was listening to the uh, Andrew Perpetual live stream, and there was talk of him on there where, where they were saying that apparently he's a warm uh, you know, kind, generous person. Like he's he's quite charismatic, and he's actually a really good person to have in that position of defense minister, where he's going about making forging relationships with other people. Uh, just it apparently is is a good choice of defense minister. So uh, that's positive for Ukrainians. Uh, not saying Reznikov wasn't. I think Reznikov was good as well, but obviously a bit of baggage there. Uh, France, Kiev. Uh, France and uh, Ukraine are discussing the possibility of transferring Mirage 2000, as I discussed with you yesterday. So they could be Mirage 2000D, a variant of the fighter. That would be very useful because they should be able to fire the uh, Scalp and Storm Shadow missiles. Now, there are Su-24Ms that can do that, but there are very few that are operational. And, uh, you know, as we saw the other night, one of those was that Su-24M that was um, targeted by a Russian Lancet drone. So, you know, these are, there's a precarious 
capacity to be able to continue delivering cruise missile attacks on uh, occupied territory. And so it's really important if, if they can get these these airframes and they can get them soon, uh, sooner rather than later. Right, Spain will provide Ukraine with a new military package and humanitarian aid package. This was announced by Margarita Robles, their defense minister. It will include infantry fighting vehicles, launchers and missiles for anti-aircraft and anti-ship defense, special trucks uh, to work with these systems, as well as ambulances. So that's really good from Spain. Uh, haven't heard an awful lot from them, although they do occasionally chip in here and there. They, they came on board with some leopards, remember, and some training of leopards as well. Belgian Prime Minister Alexandre, Alexander de Cruz said that Belgium is considering the possibility of supplying Ukraine with F-16 fighter jets. Quote, we turned... So this sounds good, but actually it's quite guarded here. And Oryx, yes, Dutch, Dutch, Belgium. Hmm. Oryx are not a fan of the Belgian support for Ukraine, right? There, there's quite a lot of uh, industrial military complex um, capacity in Belgium. And they've been really, I mean, they haven't funded their own military nearly enough. I mean, this is one of the, uh, I, I guess, one of the targets of, say, Trump, in yeah, and other people in the US saying that some European nations don't do enough for NATO, you could you could level out of Belgium. But anyway, he said we turned to the Ministry of Defence with a request to check whether the service life of our aircraft has been fully exhausted. We have to consider all options. If they are somehow still usable, so he's not being very positive here, then we definitely have to consider it. It may happen that Ukraine will use Belgian planes only for training. Then the requirements will be different. So a bit like yeah, yeah, we can if we can. Uh, but you may get Belgian F-16s being flown over Ukrainian skies. North Korea has been sending weapons to Russia for about a year. I reported this about a year ago, saying that uh, coming across a rail, uh, let's go out and see this from a... Oh, hello. Um, so over here, you've got uh, North Korea coming up here, and uh, you've got a connection um, across the border here. You've got railway that can then go up and into uh, Russia. And uh, yeah, that's basically what, there was some satellite imagery, I think, suggesting that there was there was um, connectivity between the nations there. So that, I think, has been happening. Uh, I, uh, but some people were denying it had been happening. Anyway, North Korea has been selling weapons to Russia for about a year, according to The Economist. North Korea uh, supplies Russia with 152 mil shells and missiles for multiple uh, multiple rocket launchers. Um, absolute lunacy from Poland, says The Economist defense correspondent Shashank Joshi. Quote, one of Ukraine's staunchest allies, Poland, has announced it will no longer supply weapons to the country as a diplomatic dispute over grain escalates. Right, loads of people have been talking about this. Lots of people are saying it on my threads below uh, the videos. Uh, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has said that Warsaw has stopped supplying weapons to Kiev as it actively is is actively arming itself. Uh, Poland to stop supplying weapons to Ukraine. Polish Prime Minister announced that September 20th that Poland will no longer supply U Ukraine with weapons as rifts over the import of Ukrainian grain products deepens. Right. A lot of people are connecting this to the grain uh, argument that is going on, and I've talked about that previously. Right. A lot of the Eastern European nations don't want cheap Ukrainian grain that is uh, al being allowed to be imported into EU and bypass tariffs because the EU wants to help Ukraine and then the EU put a ban on that grain and then they want to lift that ban and now these Eastern European nations want to extend the ban because they want to protect their own farmers. So there's lots of tensions going on. You can understand both sides of the argument there, right? So this is difficult, but Ukraine are then a bit of retaliation, I think, I didn't uh, want to import Polish, cheap Polish vegetables and fruit and whatnot. And so and so it goes on. Now, this uh, this source says, OK, I see that the manipulation of statements is beginning. Now, again, take this with a pinch of salt. Quote, of course, we're not going to risk Ukraine's security. So uh, this is statements, both statements from from Poland being laid out here. So our center in Rzevzhau, uh, in agreement with the Americans and NATO, will play the same role as it has played all this time and will continue to play it. In other words, you know, support for Ukraine will continue. 
and nothing says to the source nothing else needs to be added here the supply of materials for the defense of ukraine was is and will be in contrast to the manipulations in the message of the second passage Quote, we are no longer transferring any weapons to Ukraine on the grounds that we are now arming ourselves, the most modern weapon with the modern most modern weapons. If you do not want to defend yourself, you have must have something to defend yourself. This is our principle, and that is why we have increased the order. We are betting on the rapid armament of the Polish army. Now, the reality of the Polish armed force Polish armed forces at the moment is they are spending gazillions of spondulies on arming themselves with a lot of South um, South Korean stuff, a lot of indigenously made stuff together with South Korea, and also a lot of US stuff. They are spending insane, like insane amounts of money on their armed forces at the moment, Poland. And so there, there is an argument to say, actually, we've, we've given a bunch of stuff to Ukraine from our active service so we need to actually spend some time making sure our own army is is in the zone so the source says of course this statement is taken out of context and subject to manipulation but it is true while other major nato countries transfer equipment from their arsenals after the disbandment of units poland is the only country with numerous ground forces that are transferring equipment to the ukrainians retired from service taken taken from polish soldiers from line units um, the Germans donate museum equipment, Leopard 105, which even the Ukrainians did not want to accept. We give Le Leopard 2s, which we take out of service to the 10th separate armed cavalry, armoured cavalry brigade. We give the Rosamac battalion, which we take, we give them a Rosamac battalion. So those are the APCs, which we take from the 17th Wielkopolska mechanised brigade. We gave the Twardy PT-91 tanks taken out of service in uh, Brenevo and Gizitsko. More than 270 T-72 M1s M1Rs delivered to Ukraine are tanks that have just been overhauled for the line units of the Polish Armed Forces. In 2019, Poland nominally had 861 tanks. About 350 of them were transferred to Ukraine. 40% that's 40% of their active tanks. So actually no other nation has done anything close to this. Right. And so this is a really good point. No one gave more than us in terms of the size of the Polish army and the artillery. By the spring of 2022, the Polish armed forces have received about 82 AHS crab. So these are the ones that are co-produced with South Korea. Many uh, such examples can be cited. No one gave as much as Poland and as quickly. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ukraine received 54.65% of those of their crabs. I do not count deliveries from, from this year. So that's just last year. We simply have nothing more to give because we have already taken from a Polish soldier to give to a Ukrainian soldier. We temporarily weakened the Polish armed forces, but thanks to the fact that equipment from Poland saved Ukraine, our security as such has increased, stopping Russian imperialism on the battlefield and bleeding the Russian armed forces in response. We buy... Uh, new equipment but these purchases caused by need are not optimal we buy on other terms because we have no choice and the technology is just reaching us the understaffing uh, of about 30 to 40 percent of the ground forces will be closed at least until 27 20 Eight. Uh, I really hope the ill-considered statements of the Ukrainian side and the dispute over grain are a consequence of the position of the oligarchs and the quality of the political class in Ukraine and not a cynical statement that we have already given everything we could give. Uh, so on and so forth. So this is this argument is raging um, to the point where Saren here says Poland's politicians, as usual, playing the nationalist populist card against their neighbours because of their elections in two weeks. And that's maybe something to consider as well. You you know, is this is this a bit of rhetoric to take place for the next couple of weeks while there are elections going on to appease maybe some on the far right or the far left who might have pro Putin uh, predilections? I don't know. Um, and then the European Commission is considering the possibility of protecting Poland, Hungary and Slovakia from a claim filed by Ukraine with the WTO, World Trade Organization, regarding the export of agricultural products, according to the Financial Times. So then, this has just come out today. I mean, this is literally from half an hour ago. Ukraine and Poland agreed to find a joint solution regarding the export of grain. This became known as a result of the conversation between the Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food of Ukraine, Mykola Solsky, and his Polish colleague, colleague Robert Tellus. So 
You've got grain arguments that involve the EU as well. Uh, you've got the issue that Poland have given so much stuff already and and almost all of it out, out of their existing armed forces equipment. This, this isn't obsolete equipment. This isn't stuff sitting in a warehouse, very much like the US. The US has got X thousand tanks, right? And they're giving 31 Abrams. It's a drop in the ocean. Now, I'm not decrying... Whenever I say stuff like this, people go, why do you always trash the US? I'm not trashing the US at all. Without the US, Ukraine would be screwed. I'm absolutely brilliant for the US. Thank you. Um, but they can do that as well. Whereas Poland, as you've seen, have given X hundred tanks, and they're tanks that they're using. Right? They're the active brigades. And, and that's really quite different. So not only do they have far fewer tanks in the US, they're giving they're giving tanks that they are that they presently need. And so you can understand them saying, hang on, right, we need to re restock our own armed forces at the moment, and we are spending an absolute bucket on do so so doing. I mean, go and see some of Perun's videos that, that talk about Poland. I think he might have a, one explicitly on Poland as well, but that'd be somewhat outdated now. Um but but yeah, just uh, yeah, very, very interesting situation, but hopefully somewhat resolved or at least on the way to being resolved. Right. That was all fairly geopolitical, but it pertained to um, military aid. OK, thanks for watching that as military aid uh, on to geopolitical stuff for the next video. This longer today because of all the UN uh, stuff and everything going on. It's it's a bit crazy. It'll get back to normal tomorrow. Uh, sorry.